Hi, welcome back to another episode of The Art of Sheltering at Home. They're working with cut paper and we've been working on making something from the shapes. Now we're going to make shapes and make something. It sounds crazy, but it's instead of taking the shapes like the cards that we made, we're going to look at something and see the shapes in it and then and then create those shapes. So last time I was working on the heron and I finished him up and so you can see all his shapes. And uh, you can see that I that little cap on his head there. That's a shape. His eye is a shape. Um, you know, if I put the marshes in, I put the little reflection in. So and it just all comes together. Um, and if it doesn't, you know, work, then try some another shape. Or <clears throat> that that was. I hope you're having fun with yours. I also was working on the the, the woman with the dress and the hat. That one I had really fun with. I went a little overboard. Pardon the pun, because there's a boat. Um, so there she is. And I, I call this waiting for the fairy. And uh, all the shapes that, so like, her hair, if you remember, her hair was one shape. She's got the basket is actually three shapes. It's just a sort of, um, not quite a rectangle. And then the handle that goes behind her arm and then part of the handle that goes over her arm. Her arms do pieces. The boat has all sorts of pieces in it. You got this little squares for the windows. Put the little flat. It's just I was having fun, and so that's um. It's just that's the kind of stuff you can do when you take paper, make shapes, and then see what the shapes turn out as. The other thing, another thing we can do is um. Look at something we want to recreate, and look at the shapes in it. Here's um. There's a very simple pair. Um. So you can see that there'd be quite a few shapes in this. It's a little glare. And uh, so you've got this sort of center part here that's a circle, like a circle here of green. But then there's like, um, there's a, a little sliver here of darker. And you've got this little shadow here. So you put those, you sort of look at the shape. See that seeing this as a pair, you see it as that that sort of olive covered circle and then the darker triangle and then yeah, so that's that's what we're doing with um with the second part of this so the blank it's just a blank sheet of paper I chose um I chose to color it a little bit get some color on it so I'm gonna turn the camera down so you can see it And I promised a tulip, so let's do some tulips. <clears throat> so I'm going to I, I just put some green. I thought it would be more fun than plain old white. <clears throat> White's fine too. So I'm going to put it... I, I did cut... I put together a shape. So this looks like a tulip. Sort of. You know, the top of a tulip. But I put a yellow against the white, so the white is sort of a highlight, and so it's actually two shapes glued together. So I'm going to put him on here and just see what that looks. And, uh, and then I've got these other sort of tulip shapes. So when I, when I have the highlight there, that sort of tells me the light's coming in from that way. So I've got another sort of tulip shape, and I'm going to add a darker one to that to be a shadow. So that's going to be on the other side if the light's coming from this way. So I'm going to put this guy, I'm not sure where I'm going to put him yet, I'm just going to sort of lay them out here. So I'm going to put him over here, but if the light is coming from that way, then the shadow is going to fall maybe like that on, on, the, um, on the tulip. So I'm going to have, have another Shape, what can I do here? Um, I've got 
sometimes the shapes don't so if I've got a highlight sort of on that side maybe I want to do this maybe I want to put two together I'll use this piece. This is a good piece. I'm putting two together and getting a little something in between there. So a little little highlight there. So we'll just put him down here somewhere. That may need to. That may be too long. I'm gonna cut that one. I don't know yet. I'm gonna put him there. And I have. Another tool shape thing, but it needs it needs needs some kind of highlight or being able to add the, add the highlights and shadows gives it that much more dimension. I'll show you this. Um, I have a painting of a tulip. Maybe that'll help. I couldn't buy it. I couldn't get a tulip because I wasn't going to go out to the store to get a tulip. Um, and our tulips are all gone, so. Let's um, I'm gonna just show you this painting. Hope I don't make you dizzy. And uh, you can see that the shapes. I'll hold it a little closer. There. So you can see with this how it's not just a tulip. You've got a sort of a, a almost diamond shape there of red. Followed by this other diamond shape, very dark. So you, you, you've got the, the lights and the darks against each other. There's a little highlight there, a little white. Try it like a little rectangle. You get this sort of heart shaped middle of dark. So notice if you, if you don't look at it as a tulip and you look at it as a collection of shapes, this, this leaf. It's actually just a, a long triangle of light on a darker, bigger triangle. Down here in the highlights on the on the um, on the base, it's just a, it's a triangle of white with some stripes. But the eye says, you know, highlight. So it's really just it's shapes and and it's dark against light, and so that's what we're trying to achieve with this cut paper um, for two reasons. One, because it's fun and I feel like I'm in kindergarten when I can play it with scissors and paper. But also because once we start seeing shapes and playing with the shapes, you'll start noticing them more in, in your, in what you see. And that will help your art. So let's put, I'm going to put Another tulip up here. This is one. This one needs to be got a little one. Down here in the there's sort of little stem like things in this green. I might play with those when I place this. I'm not pasting anything down yet, I'm not committing. And so I have this yellow theme going on here. This needs um this one needs a little highlight. So I'm going to put a little a highlight and a shadow perhaps. So he's going to get, he's sort of down below. So I'm going to put um, a shadow on that because he's behind the other ones. So I have a darker color here that I might just put in the, as a little shadow. And we can see that. And then I might put a little, little light, a little light piece here. And then, you able to see that? And then just because I don't like to have things always the same, I'm going to put a little red one in there. And you see, you almost don't need the stems. You, 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 it's um, it's sort of speaking for itself. It says field of tulips. So 
I'm gonna play with those and and um but you see what you can what you're able to do and highlighting yeah I'll just put it all together again if you don't want to do a whole field you can just do one and actually sometimes it looks really good on on black it, um, I just have a frame here I'm gonna set it on this frame as I create this one so sometimes if you have black it'll pop, it'll make the everything else pop so let's see we've got a bunch of shapes here I've got I created this one by putting a blue blob on a yellow blob on the red blob and what do we do with those blobs we're gonna make that the the center of the tulip and then we're gonna take other blobs so you remember the painting they were like diamonds shapes and and uh, I'm just gonna put one there there were diamond shapes and rectangles and triangles so I'm gonna just do I, I got it this one is a and half half moon attached to a sort of oval so I made a little put a lot of that and you put this one that's looking like a tulip let's get that a little adjusted and so when you when you <clears throat> When you go to commit and glue it down, that will be the the telltale. Move this one over. I'll put this one in there. There we go. And there's a the tulip. Oh, he just got there. You can see that. So those are some of the interesting things you can do by seeing shapes in things so what it can help with is when you're painting or working with other kinds of media you can see those shapes and create them and then so this is an example i'll use paper on this one so you can see so when we're, when we're working on our our self-portraits you can start doing a little something more elaborate than just the outline. You start putting in shadows. So I just started playing with this, and uh, it's what's that? What's that? I'm trying to get this so you can see it. There we go. Um, I just cut out this shape, and then I said, "Well, what, what happens if I do that?" You can see that, but it suddenly turned into a face, a part of a face. Hold that down, just hold that. So, you see, it just it made an eyeball. I'm gonna stick it down there so you can see. <clears throat> so, if I were doing my self portrait from shapes. Like I did with this one, you can see how it's that's that's more um you get more, a little more layering, a little more depth when you can put the the shadows in and the, and um and you can if you just look at it, it's actually a very odd shape. It's this like you know golf club thing with a. I don't know, upside down golf club, or it's like a shape of a key almost, and turned upside down, and it becomes, you know, this the and the nose outline and and the eyeball. It's like it's it's amazing how it works because you might think that's never gonna, you know, I don't, I don't understand that, and but and you you start seeing the shapes, you work with the shapes, you know, tact, you know. So the tactile working with shapes, you'll start to see them. Here's an example of um, this. This is shapes. This, um, I, this is a painting, not a 
cut paper, but this, um, I knew this horse has a diamond blade, a diamond blaze on his, on his head, but that's not a diamond. That's just a little swash because if I put a diamond on there, it would have been too much. Um, and I knew that, I knew that, um, she was wearing a baseball cap, but I wasn't gonna. I had to look at the light on the on the cap and the and the shadows. So I don't know if that helps sort of see the shapes. So this is not like a horse's cheek. That's this sort of half moon of 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 bronzy um, color um, um, among amidst the. The darker, so I hope I'm making sense, but you, you, if you look at it just as shapes, you almost like cut part of this off here and just look at, you know, just look at them, um, you know, what you're seeing. You're looking at the, you know what you're seeing in the, um, in the negative space too. So you look at this shape and the shape, you know, it's good. It's hard to get the angle of his neck. And if I looked at the space there, that negative space, it, it, it gave me the angle of his neck. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about shapes. So let's play with this one a little more. <clears throat> so I have this eyeball thing going on here. Yeah, it face down. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see that. Put it over here. So I just stuck I saw this this piece had this in it already. So you see how it almost looks like an eye. It's just one eye and then this is half the nose. So I might play with that a little bit and see what happens. If I, especially if I go from my my other self portrait, I might mimic that and see what I can do. So I'm gonna get down to um have to get down to some lips there. So I'm going to try and shape and, um, but I'm not going to call them lips. I, I heard myself call them lips. I don't want to call them lips. No, they're shapes. So if I look at the shapes on here, this is, um, this is a, it's just a long strip. And then there's this jaggy strip of white. And then there's a strip, uh, like, line of black. So let me see if I can recreate that in a way that makes it work on this. I'm going to cut out just a thin strip of whatever color I want here. And whatever color lips I want. Okay, so there's one. So I have a strip of each of those colors. I'll make those sort of the same because that's what I did last time and that seemed to work. So I'm not calling it a mouth, I'm calling it strips of color. So it's sort of straight. And that end is not going up or down, it's just kind of straight. Okay. And then I've got this other one, I need that strip of black, and the paper is white, so I'm not going to worry about the white. I need that something dark and black. Okay, I'm winging it here. I'm going to find some of my scrap stuff and find some new dark. There's my nice dark. I don't know if it's long enough, but we'll find out. So I'm going to just cut that a little bit and see what happens. If I pay attention to the shapes, am I, am I getting anywhere? So I have long, thin strip, long, thin strip, leave space, other strip, and then you know, a little more black or dark. 
And that last piece of jerky is a, sort of a triangle. So here we go. Alright, let's see what he did. Let's see what it came up. I'm going to move this over. Sorry for the noise. Okay, so we got my There's the, the eyeball. It's definitely too um not proportional, so I'm gonna cut that up a little bit. Because they're not quite the right proportion and they're too big for this size of this one. So I'm gonna cut those stripes a little bit. Here we go. So I have a stripe of here's this one. So I'm going to try and mimic that. I have a stripe of each there, and then I have a stripe. Let's see if I can see how this comes out. I'm going to put that there, and I needed a triangle. My triangle, though. Ooh, I don't know. That sometimes happens too. You sort of cut it out and said, where did that go? I had to cut another one. Is that it? No. Yeah, it's, a, it's a messy, um, it's a messy process. Can I get it right there? No. Um, you have, I have scraps of paper all over the floor all the time. And I, I try to reclaim them up, but sometimes then the dogs go through them and, yeah. It's uh, the price we pay for art.